Hey there, welcome to the episode 8 of Coffee Basic Course. In this 8th episode, it's time for us to talk about sensory skills in the coffee industry. Uh, in general, sensory science can be applied uh, for anything in the food and beverage industry. For wine, for cheese, for uh, ice cream. Uh, you can have a sensory science you can apply in, uh, for perfumes. So there is a lot of things where sensory science can be applied but in the coffee industry we are doing and uh, applying the sensory science on the certain way uh, method which we are systematically using in the as a sensory science in the coffee industry it's called coffee cupping i will talk about it in a little bit later section of this episode for the beginning i would like to talk about the five basic tastes and five basic senses that each humans are using so, five basic senses are sight, smell, touch, sight, and hear, hearing. Um, from those five senses, in majority, we are using only three in the coffee evaluation, uh, which are uh, smell, taste, and touch. I know, Mike, you will be confused with the touch, how we are using touch in coffee evaluation, but the touch is referred for the mouthfeel, for your, tact, for your tactile sensation in the mouth, what are you perceiving while you're drinking the cup of coffee. So in coffee evaluation we are using senses such as uh, taste, touch and smell. When it comes to the five basic tastes that we are perceiving as a humans, those are sweet, most preferable taste for all humans, sweet, salt, bitterness, acidity and umami. I believe as well that you have a references for four of them except umami, so we will describe them one by one. Uh, so reference for the sweetness, of course, it's a sugar. The reference for the salt, it's salt, table salt. Then we can use, um, uh, as a, for the reference for the bitterness, we are usually using uh, caffeine powder for the reference for acidity. Usually, most people acidity are connecting with the citrus fruits, which is like a more, more most likely reference for you. So you can use a citric acid in the powder. Uh, and for umami, as a reference, I can mention a couple of things such as soy sauce, rice, mushrooms, or seasoning, Asian seasoning, which is called Ajinomoto, which is also a reference for umami taste. Later on, I will describe you how you can make your own solutions and to make five basic tastes and to try them to see how they taste in the water. So that's, uh, that is what I wanted to say about the five basic uh, tastes and the uh, five senses that humans are using. Uh, in the coffee industry from those five actually we are using three mostly in the coffee evaluation and let me repeat again the three senses that we are mostly using in the coffee evaluations are taste smell which are, are logical uh, options and as a third option is a touch uh, which is uh, which refer for your tactile sensation in the mouth or mouth feeling in while you are while you are tasting the cup of coffee so let us a little bit describe a uh, difference between the taste and flavor. So taste, taste is, uh, as we said, we have a five basic tastes and that's just a gustatory sensation in your mouth that you are perceiving through your mouth. And those can be sweet, salt, uh, bitter, umami and acidic taste. Uh, when it comes to the flavor, flavor is a more complex thing flavor includes so when you're describing the flavor of the cup of coffee you're talking about perceived taste perceived aroma and perceived mouthfeel all together as a result of flavor flavor description so flavor and taste are not the same taste is uh, just a good gustatory sensation in your mouth uh, that you are feeling uh, in uh, such as, as a sum of five basic tastes while flavor is a combination of taste, aroma and mouthfeel. So when we are describing the flavor of cup of coffee, we are describing uh, taste, aroma and mouthfeel of that coffee. So let's talk a 
about how we are actually assessing the flavor. In the picture that you will see now in the video and that I have posted in the curriculums, the theoretical part, uh, you could find the graph of the human, uh, human head with uh, some arrows and descriptors. So let's explain a little bit that uh, in more details. So when we are assessing the flavor, uh, we are assessing it uh, orthonasal, alpha, through olfactory and from gustatory sensation. Gustatory sensations are five basic tastes which are coming through the mouth and olfactory sensations are aromas that we are perceiving on the nose while we are inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling is called orthonasal while exhaling is called retronasal. When we are, while we, when we are, when we are assessing the flavor 80% of the flavor evaluation goes through olfactory, through our breathing in and out and only 20% goes through the taste. So basically if you want to taste how this actually works practically you can try to eat and uh, chew any food and to close your nose for a while while, while chewing and you will, have, you will notice that you cannot uh, recognize and to identify exact flavor you will feel maybe the taste, if it's sweet, salt, or you will feel the texture, but you will not be able to describe the flavor. Then in the middle of chewing, release your nose, and that, in that moment when aroma starts to come in and get out with the breathing, you will be able to describe a full flavor of the things that you're eating. So let me explain you now uh, how the coffee cupping is performed in, this, in the coffee evaluation process. So, coffee cupping, as we said in the beginning, is the method of sensory science. So in the coffee industry, we are evaluating coffee through the coffee cupping. Uh, there are numerous standards for the performing the coffee cupping, uh, such as uh, size of the cups that should be used, uh, ratio for the coffee to water ratio that should be used, temperature of the water, stages of the cupping, uh, time of uh, steeping and overall length of the cupping protocol that should be done. Uh, I will try to guide you through the process step by step for you to fully understand how we are practically evaluating the coffee. For successfully performing uh, coffee cupping we need a couple of gadgets in order to successfully do it. So we need a grinder to grind our coffee. So let's start with the beans. We need a coffee beans. Then we need a grinder to uh, grind those coffees. We need a scale to dose the beans. Mm, after the grinding, we need to put the hot water. So we need a kettle. We need to measure our time of extraction and all of the stages. So in the cupping protocol, so we need a stopwatch. And uh, we need the cupping bowls. We need the cupping spoons as well and some rinsing glasses on the table together with tissues. Uh, so basically those are all the gadgets that we need. So once we have uh, choose the beans which we want to evaluate and once we scale them, uh, we want to grind them. Before we grind them we want to prepare the hot water. So after we grind we can immediately pour the water after smelling the coffee. For the coffee for the cupping protocol, coffees are usually displayed in the next order. Cup number one, cup number two, cup number three, cup number four, and cup number five. So one, two, three, four, five. That's the order of the cups while, when, we are pre, when we are grading coffee professionally. Once when coffee is grinded, we are assessing the fragrance, that's the smell of dry aroma, simply by not touching the cup, just bending over and sniffing the coffees, coffee in the, in the cups. Once, when we have evaluated, fragrance, we can start pouring water over the coffees. When we start to pour water, we need to start our stopwatch because with starting the water, pouring the water, also extraction starts. This type of extraction, 
which is happening in the coffee cupping, it's called steeping. Usually, we are letting our coffee to steep in between three and five minutes, and most commonly, cuppers are uh, finishing steeping on the fourth minute, which is in the middle point, and on the fourth minute comes breaking. We are usually making cups full and this stage it's called crust. So after four minutes and uh, when the this first stage is done we are assessing the stage which is called breaking. Breaking is done usually by steering the crust three times. And in the same time, we are evaluating wet aroma. Each cup can be braked only once. After this stage, which is called breaking, there is a next stage, which is called skimming. Skimming is the stage where we are collecting the crust from the surface. We have a rinsing glasses as well to rinse our spoons and we are doing it in the same order how we have poured our water from the cup 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and on that, on that way on that way we are allowing in the same times of extra, time of extraction the same treatment, the same uh, turbulence and everything is uniform so we can grade and evaluate all five cups on the same way. If there are some leftovers from your skimming you can always collect it with a spoon gently and it will be removed, like this. Now, cupping can start. Actually, recommended time to wait for the cupping is 8 minutes. 8 minutes is for a reason, since we are, we are pouring the water temperature between 92 and 94, 8 minutes time waiting for uh, starting cupping is to let coffee cool down below 70 degrees so we can taste it without burning our tanks. Once when the 8 minutes is done we can start slurping it. The protocol for the coffee cupping is next. First with one scoop we are scooping the coffee and then transferring in another one which we are using for the slurping. We want to slurp the coffee from a reason that sprays coffee over our mouth, all over our mouth and receptors and which will give us opportunity to evaluate better the coffee profile and coffee flavor and the grade. Once we have started slurping, we are starting evaluating the different characteristics of the coffees such as flavor, aftertaste, acidity, body, balance, uniformity, sweetness, clean cup, 
an overall score after which we are computing all the scores together and giving the grade, final grade. How is that done? It will be explained in my upcoming sensory skills video more in details. For now, for you it's enough to know, this is pretty much you know, enough to know how to properly perform the coffee cupping protocol. So basically that was everything what I, have want, uh, what I wanted to show you in the episode number 8 when it comes to the coffee cupping and to the sensory analysis in the coffee industry. For the coffee basics course this is just a guidance and in more details about coffee grading, coffee evaluation, coffee cupping it will be available in my upcoming sensory skills course where we will get in touch with all details and how we are evaluating coffee. For now, that's everything for episode 8 and see you in the next episode, episode 9, where I will explain different brewing methods. See you there!